There's an extremely simple test that's used to identify a person's neuromuscular aging. A key feature of if a person is aging at an expected pace, at a slower pace, or a more rapid pace than normal. We'll get into a bit of the science and then I'll explain how to do this test at home at no cost. There are different ways of identifying aging speed and one study looked at a number of ways of identifying the relationship between these tests and aging. I won't go over the entire study, but the gist was that multiple tests for grip strength, knee strength, and balance were confirmed to relate well to aging. But above all, a specific balance test called the unilateral pedal stance test identified the greatest worsening in performance with age. And if it worsens the most, it might be most sensitive to a measure of aging. Why was this test the best? Well, at the top, I briefly mentioned neuromuscular aging. This uh, test measures that well, and it also tests vestibular function, inner ear balance, and uh, proprioception, a sense of the joint position. So when performing this test, you have to have a good sense of inner ear balance, enough strength to hold yourself upright, position your joint in a balanced position, and your brain has to be communicating non-stop with your muscles to keep adjusting which muscle cells are going to be activating and deactivating as necessary to maintain the position. Beyond the fact that it tests your physiology directly as neurons extending from your spinal cord have to have great connections with your muscle cells, which weakens with age if you aren't physically active, but the test will also help prevent falls, especially in people in their 70s and beyond, where fall risk is a greater and greater issue. Falls are especially harmful as many people who are hospitalized for falls end up dying soon afterwards. It's really no joke. Okay, so we'll see. This test is especially impactful from around age 50 onward. In another study, directly assessing the relationship between age and this test, the researchers recruited over 500 healthy participants across six age groups. Here they are. The participants then performed the unilateral pedal stance. I don't know why, but this kind of reminds me of something like a praying mantis would do. No idea why that stuck out to me in that moment. Anyway, after performing the mantis stance, the researchers graphed the results across the ages. Strikingly, if you were to compare each younger group, say under 50, to every older group, there were significant differences. Even if you were to look at people in their 60s, they tended to do much better than people in their 80s and 90s. Not exactly surprising, but still telling. Anyway, here's the data. We have the age categories on the bottom and we have the seconds able to successfully perform the test on the vertical axis. I suppose I don't need to spell it out, but there's a relatively consistent effect over 40 second test result for those in their 50s and younger. And then there's a rapid decline in the performance of everyone from then on. It's striking and a damning result, don't you think? Reading the graph accurately can be a bit tricky. So let's uh, break this down by age category and what your target should be based on this study. So if you're between 18 and 39, the average was around 44 seconds. 40 to 49, approximately 42 seconds. 50 to 59, around 41 seconds. 60 to 69, it drops a lot to 32 seconds. 70 to 79, again a sharp drop to 21 seconds. Finally, 80 to 99, only nine seconds. There weren't any big differences between men and women either. So the assumption here is that if you are, for example, 64 years old, and you get a result of, let's say, 39 seconds, your neuromuscular age is probably on the younger side. Or if you're 28 and you get a result of 22 seconds, you're not doing as well as normal. Okay, so how do we do this test properly for ourselves? Well, there's two versions of this test. And I'm gonna describe the simpler version now, but if you're interested in a more difficult version along with a written out protocol, that'll be available for the Physionic Insiders along with all my other perks that uh, you get from that membership. Check it out, it's in the description box. Here's how this works. One, you need to do this on firm flooring and barefoot or with thin socks not thick carpet, for example. Two, you'll need a stopwatch of some sort that you'll turn on at the start of the test. Getting the exact start right makes all the difference on the results, considering that the results are seconds apart. Three, 
fold your arms like a vampire getting out of a casket. Now, if you want to say something like, I want to suck your blood as you do it, that's an optional extra. Four, look out directly in front of you, head neutral, eye level. Five, lift one leg up above ankle height of your still planted foot. Do not touch your planted foot. It's at this time that you are officially beginning the test and you can click that on your stopwatch. If your raised leg touches the floor or touches the other leg or you have to support yourself in any way, the test is over. Now, critically, most studies do the test three times and either take the best result or the average result. The numbers that I listed out earlier were based on the best of three attempts. So the main points here are, one, a valuable test for assessing aging is through this unipedal stance test, or as I fondly call it, the vampire mantis test. Two, this test tracks with declining age, so better results implies better overall neuromuscular age. Now another exercise I really like is clicking to this next video, and click, and click, and click, and click. That's right, keep it up, click. Click, click, you got it, keep it up.